In this video, we will delve into the incidents that unfolded in Costa Rica. Maria Luisa Dino, aged 47, was discovered in an unresponsive state in a hotel room. The enigmatic circumstances surrounding her death triggered an extensive investigation. Maria Luisa's body bore bite marks inflicted by multiple individuals. Interestingly, the hotel staff reported no unusual sounds, with only the woman's dog alerting them to a potential issue. Born on May 29, 1977, in La Fortuna de San Carlos, Costa Rica, Maria Luisa was the youngest among five siblings. She completed her high school education in 1994 as a dedicated student with aspirations of becoming the first in her family to obtain a university degree. Fueled by determination, she pursued a career in medicine and successfully graduated from the medical faculty at the university in San Jose. She attained master's degrees in anesthesiology and surgical medicine rehabilitation. Maria Luisa thrived as an anesthesiologist, earning recognition as a prominent specialist in the medical field. Many individuals who dedicate themselves to building a successful career often find little time for personal matters, and Maria Luisa was no exception. While studying at university, she entered into a relationship with a fellow doctor, but their connection proved short-lived. Their breakup in February 2020 plunged her into a period of depression, a situation exacerbated by the global virus-related restrictions. Seeking respite from her challenges, Maria Luisa decided to spend a weekend in a tranquil coastal setting. She booked a room at La Mansion in Cape Coast Punta Arenas, selecting a ground-floor room with dual entrances. One entrance granted access from the hotel's lobby while the second provided a direct link to the courtyard. Maria Luisa opted for this room as she was accompanied by her cherished dog. Checking in on Saturday, July 18, 2020, she planned to depart on Monday, July 20. Her stay unfolded according to the scheduled itinerary. Maria Luisa settled into her hotel room on July 18 and enjoyed a delightful day at the beach with her faithful dog the following day. Exploring the local streets, she captured moments in photographs, sharing them with her close ones. On the evening of Monday, July 20, anticipating her departure for work in San Jose the next morning, Maria Luisa ordered a bottle of wine, two glasses, and water to her room. However, she failed to appear for the 8 a.m. breakfast as scheduled. Initially, the hotel staff presumed she had chosen to sleep in, opting not to disturb her. As the hours passed without any sign of Maria Luisa, concern began to mount among the staff. Around noon, the maid commenced knocking on her door, yet there was no response. The disquieting element was the incessant barking of her dog within, a stark contrast to the notion that the dog's persistent barking would have awakened her, as previously noted. Given that Maria Luisa's room had two entrances, the maids approached the one leading from the courtyard. Despite repeatedly calling out her name, all that echoed back was the restless barking of the dog. Since the door was left unlocked, they made the decision to enter. Upon crossing the threshold, a chilling scene unfolded before them. Bloodstains marred the surroundings, and Maria Luisa's lifeless body lay wrapped in sheets on the bed. In response to the grim discovery, one of the maids promptly contacted emergency services, urgently requesting an ambulance and police intervention. Unfortunately, the woman had succumbed to her injuries hours before the distress call. From the outset, this case bore an eerie peculiarity. Despite the nearly vacant hotel, a consequence of the global virus spread, there was always a staff presence. Strangely, none of them reported witnessing or hearing anything untoward. Maria Luisa's room, equipped with an electronic lock, added an additional layer of mystery. Security, armed with access to a comprehensive key usage database, could trace every instance of entry. However, their investigation revealed that no one but Maria Luisa had accessed the room. The staff did possess a duplicate key, but its usage was not recorded on the night of the crime. However, as previously mentioned, Maria Luisa's room had a second entrance a sliding glass door that required no electronic key for access. 
Investigators, therefore, theorized that the perpetrator gained entry through this door. Another conjecture considered was the possibility that Maria Luisa willingly allowed the assailant into her room. Promptly, the police dismissed theft as a motive, as the room's valuables, including jewelry and money, remained undisturbed. This pointed to the likelihood that the criminal had alternative motives. During the examination of Maria Luisa's body, criminologists discerned the true intent behind the crime. The woman, found naked and engaged in a struggle for her life, yielded crucial evidence. DNA traces from the assailant were discovered under her fingernails, while bite marks on her face and chest, finger marks on her ankle, facial bruises from heavy blows, traces of strangulation on her neck, and genital injuries, along with seminal fluid, further painted a grim picture. Notably, distinct footprints were identified on the floor near the bed. Alongside the victim lay her phone, two glasses, an open bottle of wine, and water on the table. Forensic experts determined head and neck injuries as the cause of death. Initial expectations were that DNA samples could be extracted from the bite marks on Maria Luisa's body. However, the examination results revealed an unexpected twist. While the bites on her chest and cheek contained her saliva, a person cannot bite their own cheek. This revelation suggested that the perpetrator deliberately contaminated the bite marks with Maria Luisa's saliva, possibly in an attempt to mask their own DNA. Another peculiar aspect of the crime was that the perpetrator took the unsettling step of washing Maria Luisa's lifeless body before wrapping it in a sheet and placing it on the bed. This potentially indicated an attempt to obliterate any remaining evidence on the body. To some degree, this macabre effort proved successful. The anguish brought upon Maria Luisa's family, particularly her elderly parents, who were over 80, transcended the realm of ordinary grief. It wasn't merely the loss of life but the harrowing ordeal Maria Luisa endured before her demise that intensified the pain for her family. For those who knew her, be they friends, colleagues, or relatives, disbelief shrouded the reality that this kind, cheerful, and sympathetic soul was no longer among them. The news of the heinous crime that claimed the life of a well-known anesthesiologist swiftly permeated throughout Costa Rica. Consequently, the police were spurred to swiftly identify and apprehend the person responsible for Maria Luisa's tragic death. The police initiated their investigation by scrutinizing individuals who worked and resided at the hotel during the same period as Maria Luisa. Despite the presence of CCTV cameras, the police faced a setback as these cameras were non-functional, thus hindering access to crucial recordings. The hotel's sparse occupancy, a consequence of global circumstances, also impacted the workforce. Maria Luisa had shared with a friend that the same individual who served coffee at the hotel also performed various other duties. Despite the challenges, she expressed having an enjoyable time there. The hotel's proprietor was Haribo Don, a Dutch businessman born in The Hague in 1951. Having relocated to the United States in the 1970s, he commenced his career at Hilton, eventually ascending to the role of hotel manager. In the early 1980s, Haribo Don transitioned to become the director of the National Press Club in Washington. While officially recognized as a journalist's club, it also served as a venue where politicians, presidents, and journalists from around the world convened. Over time, Bodan established a network of connections and acquired real estate in numerous countries. Among his holdings was a hotel in Costa Rica, where he resided with his younger husband, Yada Danilo Ovando. Another occupant of the hotel was Teodoro Herrera Martinez, a 38-year-old individual in a close relationship with the hotel's owner, Haribo Don. According to reports, they initially crossed paths in one of the bars where Martinez worked as a stripper. Approximately a year later, Bo Don extended an invitation for Martinez to join the staff at his hotel, though he was eventually let go due to a lack of customers. However, Bo Don allowed Martinez to continue residing in one of the rooms without charge. With Martinez occasionally handling personal tasks for both Don and engaging in work related to hotel maintenance. 
Teodoro Martinez surfaced as the primary suspect after an official police dog traced its way to the door of his room. Scratches on his back and cheeks, likely inflicted during Maria Luisa Dino's struggle for her life, raised suspicions. Furthermore, the discovery of blood traces on his shoes strongly implicated his involvement in the crime. Martinez was apprehended on the day following the incident and subsequently incarcerated for a period of six months. During this time frame, authorities worked diligently to conclude the investigation, unravel all the intricacies of the crime, and prepare the case for court. Five days after Maria Luisa's death, the police made a second arrest. The suspect was identified as 36-year-old Luis Carlos Miranda, who, much like Teodoro Martinez, enjoyed a close friendship with Haribo Don during the prosperous period of the latter's business. Miranda served as Don's public relations specialist and resided in the hotel but faced challenges in his professional life. Initially, the police withheld specific details about the evidence that led to Miranda's arrest. However, it later surfaced that experts were inclined to believe Luis Carlos Miranda left one of the bites on the victim's body. Meanwhile, Teodoro Martinez served his six-month prison sentence. In the initial stages of the investigation, the police speculated that Maria Luisa may have invited someone to her room, citing her order of two glasses. However, further interviews with her family and friends revealed that Maria Luisa routinely used two glasses, with the second one designated for water when she drank wine. A month following Maria Luisa's death, the police took Haribo Don, the owner of the hotel, into custody. One of the bites on the woman's body matched his dental cast, leading investigators to believe that Bo Don was one of the three individuals involved in the crime. Despite the arrests, all three individuals vehemently denied any connection to the demise of the renowned anesthesiologist. While Miranda and Martinez were sentenced to six months in prison, Haribo Don was placed under house arrest, citing his health problems, which included battling Parkinson's disease and cancer as reported in the news. The police questioned both Don's husband Jada Danilo Bondo. He denied that Harry could have been involved in Maria Louise's death, describing in detail that day and night when the crime occurred. That day as usual, he got up early to help Don bathe and get dressed. Then Obando went to sleep at 12 p.m. He woke up, ate something and went to his office on the hotel territory. At that time, his job was to create a website to improve hotel attendance under government restrictions. He spent the day at work and in the evening he drank rum with Martinez and Miranda by the pool. According to Ovando, both he and Bo Don were asleep when the latter's phone rang around 1 a.m. Bo Don answered the call, learning from a hotel security guard that Martinez had allegedly stolen some beer from the hotel bar and was seen wandering the corridors. Ovando assisted Bo Don in getting up, and together they went in search of Martinez. They discovered him clad in shorts and shirtless, holding a beer. Bo Don confiscated the beer, cast it to the floor, and sternly instructed Martinez to retire to bed, contemplating where he would stay next, emphasizing his unwelcome status in the hotel. Subsequently, as pro Vando, he and Bo Don returned to their room. It was on this very night that the crime occurred. The puzzling aspect was the apparent lack of any audible disturbance, considering Maria Luisa's severe injuries and struggle for survival. Authorities initially suspected Yada Danilo Ovando's involvement in the crime but found no evidence to substantiate the claim. As previously noted, Haribo Don was under house arrest, fitted with an ankle monitor, and prohibited from leaving the hotel or contacting other suspects. By the close of 2021, Bodan opted to sell his hotel, compelled by deteriorating health and the need to finance legal services. The new owners of the hotel denied him residency, compelling him to relocate. Although he provided his new address to the prosecutor's office, they categorized him as a potential flight risk, prompting the removal of his house arrest in March 2022. Dissatisfied with the care received at the prison hospital, Haribo Don criticized it as substandard, alleging violations of human rights. The trial commenced in September 2022, 
with each court session unveiling more details of the case. The prosecution asserted Teodoro Martinez as the primary suspect, emphasizing his scratches and the discovery of his DNA under Maria Luisa's fingernails. Furthermore, the seminal fluid traces at the crime scene were attributed to Martinez. Owing to the overwhelming public interest in the trial and the extensive media coverage, multiple postponements occurred due to space constraints in the courtroom. Haribo Don made a courtroom appearance in a wheelchair, accompanied by his lawyer, who sought his transfer to house arrest citing health concerns. However, the court denied this request. The prosecution presented its account of the events, contending that on the night of July 19th to July 20th, 2023, the suspects entered Maria Luisa's room and launched a vicious attack against her. They gained access through the sliding glass door, a calculated move, considering it wouldn't be logged in the database, and the hotel's sparse occupancy ensured the attack went unnoticed, evidenced by the absence of screams. Prosecutors theorized that Maria Luisa was likely asleep when the three assailants launched their attack, possibly silencing her with some form of restraint to muffle any sounds. Haribo Don and Miranda left dental imprints on her body, suggesting they restrained her while Martinez enacted his sadistic acts. Despite Maria Luisa's valiant struggle, the odds were insurmountable. She endured severe beatings, culminating in strangulation that led to a fractured cervical vertebrae. Aware of the limited witnesses, the trio took their time to erase any traces. They washed her body, placed it on the bed, and concealed it under a sheet. To further complicate forensic analysis, they utilized Maria Luisa's saliva to obscure the bite marks, thwarting the identification of foreign DNA. Each defendant's lawyer pursued a distinct strategy. Bo Don's defense contended that their client had recently undergone knee surgery impeding his mobility and rendering him incapable of participating in the crime, let alone committing the brutal acts. The trial faced yet another delay when the expert witness expected to testify about the teeth marks on the victim's body left the country. In response, Miranda's lawyer called upon a Spanish orthodontist from Madrid to provide an opinion. The orthodontist, however, asserted that the teeth marks on the skin lacked sufficient evidentiary weight. Although her testimony was initially planned for two days, she abruptly returned to Spain after one day, citing intimidation by the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor's office, in turn, challenged her competence and contemplated legal action, alleging that she was not accredited by a professional association in Costa Rica, thus posing as an illegal expert. The Ministry of Justice and Peace, drawing conclusions from their investigation, asserted that the crime could not have been executed by a lone perpetrator. Consequently, they maintained the stance that all three men were implicated in the case. Miranda's defense contested the theory of multiple perpetrators, introducing skepticism into this aspect of the case. The defense attorney scrutinized the flaws in the judicial examination, highlighting inconsistencies that, in their view, should have formed the grounds for Miranda's acquittal. In a pivotal court session, the lead investigator handling the case provided a statement, revealing that it took over five hours to thoroughly inspect the crime scene. Their discovery, facilitated by the application of luminol in the bathroom, indicated that the perpetrators had washed Maria Luisa's body before placing it on the bed. The absence of marks on the hotel room floor but the presence of finger marks on the victim's ankles led experts to believe that at least two individuals were involved in moving Maria Luisa's body onto the bed. Teodoro Martinez faced more compelling evidence against him during the trial. It was disclosed that Maria Luisa's blood was found on the inside and outside of his shoes, presenting irrefutable proof of his connection to the crime. This could suggest that Martinez was barefoot at the time of the crime, possibly staining his feet with blood before putting on his shoes. Additionally, blood was found on his phone and watch. Furthermore, Martinez's DNA, including seminal fluid, was identified on the victim's body. Unlike the other two defendants, Martinez couldn't deny his involvement in the crime. In light of this evidence, he acknowledged intimate contact with the victim but vehemently denied any other wrongdoing. 
In the course of the investigation, it was revealed that Haribo Don had undergone knee surgery at the same clinic where Maria Luisa worked. However, since she wasn't the only anesthesiologist at the clinic, and there was no evidence of any encounter between her and Bodan. According to him, he only learned of her presence at his hotel after receiving a call about a deceased woman in one of the rooms. In one of the interrogations, Don asserted this information. Bodan was questioned about the inoperative security cameras at his hotel. He conceded that there were cameras, but due to financial constraints, none were operational. We had about five or six low-quality cameras, and gradually, they all broke down, Don explained. He also mentioned electricity issues at the hotel, assuring that the maintenance staff addressed such problems. Beyond the bite marks on the victim's body, there was no substantial evidence linking Haribo Don and Luis Carlos Miranda to the crime. Consequently, the pivotal question hinged on whether dental prints could be deemed as indisputable evidence. During Miranda's trial, the judge clarified several key points, emphasizing that dental evidence, specifically the matching of teeth patterns with bite marks on the victim's body, could not be considered due to the failure to read the accused man his rights before taking a sample. Although there was some evidence against Bo Don, the judge underscored the impossibility of determining whether his dental cast matched the bite mark. Forensic experts asserted that the teeth analysis allowed them to exclude everyone in the hotel on the night of Maria Luisa's death, except Miranda and Bo Don. However, the judge noted the possibility that someone else may have left the marks on the victim's body, casting doubt on the evidentiary value. In April 2023, the court rendered Teodoro Martinez guilty of causing Maria Luisa Dino's death, sentencing him to 50 years in prison. Conversely, the court acquitted Haribo Don and Luis Carlos Miranda due to lingering doubts about their involvement in the crime. However, the saga continued. In October 2023, the Costa Rican Court of Appeal decided to reevaluate the case against Bo Don and his two co defendants with a new panel of judges. The prosecution relied on alleged teeth marks matching both Don and Miranda on the victim's body as evidence. The prosecutor's office sought to persuade the new judges of the validity of these teeth marks as conclusive evidence. Bo Don, unsurprised by this decision, criticized the prosecutor's office for its failed investigation and the numerous inconsistencies in the case. He accused the female prosecutor of bias, claiming she exploited the case for personal career advancement. Bo Don, now residing in the Netherlands, expressed indifference to the possibility of detention, noting that there is no extradition treaty between the Netherlands and Costa Rica. He emphasized his reluctance to return to Costa Rica, citing a distrust in the legal system and a negative experience, having spent almost three years in prison. In an interview with Dutch journalists, he remarked, Given my terrible experience with the Costa Rican legal system and the fact that I paid a high price in the form of almost three years in prison, it is not in my interest to go back. Thus, the case has yet to reach its conclusion. 